Hello! And once again I am kinda late with this review because there are already a lot of reviews of Tin Hi-Fi T4 even uh, including uh, big shots like uh, Headphonia and even St Steve Gartenberg so I will put some links to other reviews in the description so you can follow them and get more uh, different opinions, but I still can't miss this model because I like Tin Hi-Fi. I'm following their models starting with uh, T2 and they are really good in implementing nice and a bit unusually tuned sound. Their T2 and T2 Pro was pretty natural, surprisingly natural for the affordable in-ear monitors. Then they've released uh, nice, nicely tuned hybrids T3 and of course uh, P1 that uh, in ear planar that was uh, discussed so many in that was so many discussed they are hard to drive but, but they offering really unusual sound anyway it's a matter of different uh, topics and i already cover all that models and now they've announced new single dynamic model t4 they already uh, started pre-sale and they are selling it from indiegogo but it's not a regular crowdfunding campaign as far as i understood understand it's uh, they are already sending uh, first batches of this in ear monitor so you can just uh, order it from Indiegogo and save uh, up to 20% or even more. They have different perks for different amount. Current price is 80 e euros, but uh, retail price will be $110. And actually, you know, they raised the price because T4 was about 50 or it was a much more affordable model, but um, now they are climbing to the upper tier, but Maybe it's logical taking into account that they are offering better and better sound and build. Earphones box is hard to open because it fits lid fitting really tightly, so I already opened them. But anyway, box is really nice, pleasant uh, soft touch uh, material used here, but as you can see it's gathering fingerprints. So inside you will have uh, earphones themselves. stock cable and a set of tips so a pair of forms and a three set of each consisting of three pairs of silicon tips as you can see it's a nice set of tips so you can find the proper one and a really good uh, leather holding uh, case you know i miss t2 package because i like their uh, book like uh, case it was looking it looked really attractive so specifications 10 millimeter carbon nanotube dynamic driver sensitivity 102 decibels and uh, impedance 32 ohms so as you can see really really good uh, balance of sensitivity and impedance so it will it will be a good load both for smartphones and for players but actually of course it will it require a player to unveil the full potential in terms of design of course they are great let me zoom in a little bit so as you can see level of metal work is astonishing now this time they've used polished metal it looks really attractive some uh, some airplane inspired design we can definitely say that uh, teen hi-fi have their own style surprisingly short spouts but uh, because in ear monitors them themselves are pretty small so they are fitting nicely into the ears and they uh, they isolating your ear channel pretty nicely because case of the earpiece itself serves as a as kind of earplug so sound isolation is uh, about average because with such short spouts i've expected worse results so there is a lip for holding the tips and uh, some uh, some protective grill let me put tips back here is pressure relief hole and probably another one connector MMCX so it's this uh, in-air monitors designed to be worn over the ear of course you can 
wear them this way so like this and win the cable over your ear or you can swap them and actually you can you can wear it this way so you have to swap left and right ear piece and in this case you can use it in the right in your right ear this way and actually I, for me this way this uh, fit is more comfortable but anyway they are small so this option is works for me okay too they also added uh, some really nice cable it's made of high purity silver plated copper but so here it is mmcx connectors with metal made of metal looks really nice sleek and here is ear hook uh, without memory wire but anyway holding cable well but uh, cable itself is a bit uh, hard so it's uh, not the softest one definitely and this uh, sticky sound sticky silicon isolation uh, makes it even a bit more uh, clumsy and it has a slight microphonic effect ear hooks reduce it but it's still present a little bit if you didn't find the proper fit and but you can use the chin slider to reduce it so just adjust it here is splitter and after the splitter it goes braided down below to the regular absolutely regular standard long metal jack so uh, actually tin hi-fi offers uh, some uh, third-party cables already but there are a lot of cables with MMCX so I will probably swap it uh, to get uh, softer and more comfortable cable but in terms of sound this one is uh, pretty good and uh, you definitely can use it without getting another one but if you get one you can increase the comfort besides that uh, build quality is really nice they look really stylish and uh, most probably they will be really durable they are made of metal and build really solidly so i think they will serve you for a long time and of course about the sound i gave them about uh, 20 hours of burn-in but unfortunately i didn't listen to them before doing that so i'm not sure do they require burn-in or not but uh, I listened them for 20 additional hours and sound didn't change uh, during that period so probably if burning is required it's uh, still under 20 hours. What is uh, more important here is to find a proper fit because uh, and proper tips providing you the proper fit because as any single dynamic drivers in general and uh, tin audios especially good fit is required to unveil the full potential of drivers that uh, they are using actually you can experiment with spin feeds you can try symbio ear tips actually with symbio ear tips you will have more low frequencies but uh, let's uh, speak about the sound step by step in terms of tuning is it's a slightly v-shaped signature but actually accent on lows is about 5 decibels and on the treble is about 10 decibels compared with uh, mid-range so basically it's not totally linear but lower part of sonic spectrum can be considered as almost flat and uh, it's flat signature with a bit raised uh, lower uh, with bit raised upper mids and treble so let's have some player on the table to show examples and let's speak about the sound so bass is the no most noticeable change comparing with uh, t2 and e probably even with the t3 because it's uh, the most the busiest model in the tin audio lineup but at the same time they have uh, less bass accent than uh, other models by other manufacturers so it's not definitely not bass heavy model and it's still you know model for those who like resolving and um, maybe not uh, totally mid-centric but uh, who wants resolving sound with uh, noticeable amount of mids and with uh, not dominating bass so when bass is present in the record this uh, earphones plays it nicely with uh, enough of impact with enough slam and actually they have surprisingly good depths and control deeper layers of bass maybe not the deepest one but uh, definitely good depths for this uh, price 
nice range and uh, base is good in terms of texturing and it's uh, really good in terms of uh, speed in terms of attacks and decay they are really realistic and uh, they are so low frequencies here sounds really lifelike maybe this can be considered as model created more for the <clears throat> for real instruments for acoustic instruments or some instruments like bass guitar not for synthesized bass but uh, even with electronic music they are playing nicely thanks to the depth but of course if you if you if electronic music is your most preferred genre of you need probably consider something more bass heavy as an example this time i've got this track it's uh, scott bradley postmodern jukebox i often recommend this uh, project for those who who like to start listening to jazz music but at the same time uh, don't uh, don't want to get dull quickly because uh, postmodern jukebox create cover versions of popular rock and uh, pop hits uh, but make they are making them in the vintage style it's they are covering it in jazz uh, swing uh, what else sometimes even something like charleston or ragtime but anyway it's always sounding pretty stylish and amusing and uh, as you can see this time i've selected ice ice baby you know this track it's famous for its uh, bass line that was taken from the queen's bass line and uh, here they also uh, using this bass line of course but here it's played by acoustic double bass and it's not as dominate dominate it's not dominate dominating sorry it's not as dominant yeah dominant as dominant as in the vanilla ice version because uh, here this acoustic bass uh, isn't accented and uh, if uh, some earphones play this uh, bass line without enough resolution it's easily it's easy to lose this part but this earphones are playing acoustic bass in a really engaging way and it's really noticeable Mids are clean, crisp, really detailed and focused on the micro contrast. So it's model for those who like critical listening, for those who like uh, to hear tiny nuances and details. And at the same time, it makes them really critical to the source and to the quality of records. Because you know, if they are, they really not they really highlight uh, issues with tracks and if there is some compression or mastering issues they will show it to you clearly and they are also re uh, source dependent because they just show the character of the source so if player is analytical they will highlight that and you will have analytical and absolutely natural sound if player is leaning towards emotional or warmer side they will show it that too so basically you will have the not 100 percent but to uh, some degree you will have the sound of your player in this in your monitors at the same time they are resolving and detailed but of course not as detailed as balanced armatures but still on the detailed side for the dynamic drivers but thanks to the dynamic drivers used here they are not uh, bodiless they have enough of weight and body to sound uh, more realistic than typical inexpensive balanced armatures and another their strong side is imaginary stage it's uh, really noticeably above average both in width and in depth not the biggest one but uh, bigger than most of competitors so if you like to get bigger and well expanded stage it will be a nice option but of course stage is subjective so also please keep that in mind and as an example I've got this track it's true everyone was waiting for this album almost everyone and finally we've got it i could select every single track but invincible is a nice example it could be used as a base example too and as a travel example also but here is it i use it as an example of meads a lot of sophisticated guitar works uh, really good uh, and well recorded vocal and this uh, in-ear monitors play this track uh, really nicely 
and treble. So it's accented as well as upper mids, but at the same time for me they don't cross the line of being comfortable. Of course, if you are treble sensitive and if you're afraid of uh, uh, harsh trebles, you can you 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 have to listen to them before buying because uh, they don't try to hide treble. But at the same time, for me, this level of treble is okay. They have normal extension, not the best one, but also a bit above average. They have uh, pretty good attacks and decays. Uh, not superb, but close to realistic one. And of course a nice resolution and enough of crispness, so they are pretty good in uh, playing these overtones and saturating the tune. Of course there is no layering is really really basic, but it's common for inexpensive in-ear monitors. And uh, to provide uh, good layering we need something much more expensive. But still nice treble if you are not uh, super sensitive to this part of uh, Sonic Spectrum. Room. And as an example, I've got one of my most beloved tracks. I really like this album, I really like this track. It's uh, Steven Wilson's uh, Watchmaker. I won't try to describe this masterpiece in words, just uh, find it on YouTube and listen it, uh, because it's really great. And the uh, guitar intro here sounding really realistic, it's recorded perfectly, because Steven Wilson is a great uh, sound producer and recording engineer. If you don't familiar with him, just uh, Google his discography on the Wikipedia and uh, take a look at the discography at the end, because he is creating really great masters of classical progressive rock, from starting from his and ending with Jet Rotal. I'm always trying to get his remixes of uh, classical albums, because they are sounding really modern, but at the same time he preserves that uh, sense of original work. But uh, Speaking about this particular track, it's a great guitar, really saturated with a lot of overtones, with a lot of details, really realistically recorded, and this uh, earphones play this uh, guitar in a really nice and engaging way. And uh, in terms of pairing, I already said that they require something good with really well controlled mids and uh, also as I've said before, what you will give to them, you will get back. So, uh, find searching the proper dub for them is a matter of your sound preferences. Just find the one that sounds how do you like it to sound. They have uh, normal impedance and normal sensitivity, so they are not too noise picking, and it's a good sight. And briefly about compressions. First of all, of course, uh, positioning this in your monitors, comparing with the other tin hi-fi models, and basically it uh, overperforms uh, all T models. It's expected, ex expectable, but still, it's more realistic and have more bass than T2 and T2 Pro, and it's more weighty on the mid than T3. So all that uh, things make this uh, a bit better choice. But of course, it's more expensive, so it's something that you can expect. P1, you know, P1 is great if you like uh, fast transitions and if you like really technical sound. But at the same time, this one sounding a bit more engaging to me. It's a bit less monitoring, but a bit more emotional and engaging. And I like this a bit uh, warmer bass here. Well, just a pair of some a pair of other models, so they are more resolving and more natural compared to the um, my reference point Austri KC09. So if you like warmer and laid back signature, then go for Austri. But if you like more natural and resolving sound and a bit more natural, this one is your nice is a good choice for you. And uh, I bought so IT01, another $100 hybrid model. They are a bit. They have a bit less uh, low frequencies, and at the same time, they a bit. They are a bit fast on the lows, and they are a bit more mid forward and a bit more aggressive in general representation. So if you like more emotions thrown in your face, then your choice is Hibasu, while this one is a bit more uh, re realistic and natural. So. 
can I think of some other model? And actually another model to mention is uh, Moondrop KXXS. They are also pretty natural and with uh, upper mid accent. But uh, KXXS is a bit more even on the treble. They have more linear treble and upper mid, so they sound a bit more realistic in this area. But all their price is also noticeably higher and in that price range you can also get a P1, so it's uh, another type of competition. So it was TIN uh, Hi-Fi T4 and the dynamic driver that will be uh, that will have a lot of attention. They already have a lot of attention and will have more attention in the future because they are done nicely and they are sounding nicely. Thank you for listening and have a nice day.